Today we're going to be proving the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem when we create a triangle with the base angles are congruent, the sides opposite of the base angles are supposed to be congruent as well. So let's let's first create a triangle where the base angles are congruent. So we're going to do that using starting with the ray tool and we're going to just create one of the base angles. We're going to measure the tool using this angle, this ray using the angle tool, and rename this. The reason why I'm renaming it is because right now it's angle alpha, which is difficult to work with Greek letters on a, on a um, keyboard. So I'm going to write the word angle. So now I want this angle over here to be the same angle. So watch what I do. Angle with a given size. I'm going to click on A, C, and I'm going to write that word angle and go clockwise. Now I'm going to use my line tool and go from A prime to C. Intersect. And here we have a triangle. Let's see if this is an isosceles triangle. And we are going to be showing these two sides are equal to each other. This is a construction so we can actually move these points around to make it really cool to make it look like an isosceles triangle. But um, we're going to remove some stuff here. We're going to remove a prime C and we're only going to, we're going to remove um, B, we don't need that point, we just need the vertices and we're going to remove our two A's. So what we're going to be doing is, let me go over here to the first top before I show you what we're going to do. Where our base angles are both 29 degrees, we're going to be showing that if our given our base angles are congruent, then this is an isosceles triangle where these opposite sides are congruent. So let's go to the geometry view and begin. Okay, I just moved my triangle around a little bit and I haven't quite finished what I wanted to move because I want to make sure the vertices are visible. So let's make sure these vertices A, B, and D are visible. So we're going to be proving the converse, let's write this down, converse of isosceles triangle theorem. And what we're going to be doing is given the base angles are congruent, we're going to be showing that the um, Let's see, I was trying to move this right over here. Given the base angles are congruent, we're going to be showing we're proving that AD is congruent to DC. So let's write that down. Prove AD is congruent to DC. And we're going to put the congruent symbols because these are line segments. So we're going to be doing a two column proof. So let's go for it. And we're going to write down statements on this side. and reasons on this side. And the first line of every proof is what's given. It doesn't want to type for right some for some silly reason. Right here we go, given. And we are given that the base angles are congruent, so angle A is congruent to angle D C. So let's write that down. angle A is congruent to angle C. So right now I'm just going to not show these. So let's go over here and I'm not going to do show object. I'm going to show object. Oops, I did the wrong one. Now I need to move this and do show cancel. Show object. So now we're going to be given, let's write down what we're given with our pen tool. So we're given these two are congruent. And let's move this over. So let's let's see what we can work with this. And I just try to make this touch the base, but I'm not sure if I can. There we go. So there's several ways of doing this. We could have created an angle bisector, but from the notes they had us create a perpendicular bisector. Let's, so let's construct that. So we're going to construct a perpendicular bisector through segment AC. So we're going to construct it through this segment AC. So how we're going to do that is use this tool, perpendicular bisector tool. Click on these two segments and we have the perpendicular bisector. Intersect them and we're going to intersect right here and we'll call that point, we'll call that point E. And now definition of perpendicular bisector is what's going to follow logically next.
So the definition of a bi perpendicular bisector says that AE, that segment, is congruent to EC. And E is 90 degrees. So we're going to put that down and we're going to mark it. So if AE is congruent to EC, we can mark it here and here. And we're going to mark these two angles as congruent. So what we're going to be doing is showing the left-hand side is congruent to the uh, left-hand triangle is congruent to the right-hand triangle. So let's just change these colors a little bit for contrast. And we'll change, well, we don't really need to change the right one, but I will just, just, just because I want to. And we'll call it a, like a reddish, reddish color. So we're going to be proving the left is congruent to the right. We have enough information. These are congruent by angle side angle postulate because we have an angle, a side, and an angle. An angle, a side, and an angle. So this is going to be congruent by angle side angle postulate. And we have to get make sure we put in the right the triangles in the right order. So the letters of the vertices. So A D E is going to be congruent to A is corresponds to C D E. So that's this is it, and now we're almost there because the last line of our proof is what we're proving, and we can say by CPCTC. And if you don't remember what that means, it's corresponding parts are congruent, triangles are congruent. We know that we can now say the segment AD, which is the first two letters, is congruent to CD, the second two letters. So let's write that down. And we'll put the, we'll bring this over and put the lines on top. And that ends our proof. But for to make this an exact ending proof, the way I always like to end it, I always end it with this um, pound sign. So now we're done. And thank you very much for watching.